Hi, I'm Emily and I'm the Castle Girl. Today I'm at Castle Varick. Castle Varick is a ruined tower house castle that sits high on a rock overlooking the coastal village of Tongue in the northwest highlands of Scotland in the former county of Sutherland. Its vantage point allows far-reaching views over the shallow sea loch known as the Kyle of Tongue on the northeast side. And to the southwest, you can see the spectacular mountains of Ben Royal and Ben Hope. In Gaelic, translated from Old Norse, Tunga means village. The origins of the castle are unknown and could possibly have been the site of an ancient Norse fortress. This original structure is thought to be over a thousand years old, however there are no remains left to confirm this. According to the Book of Mackay by Angus Mackay in 1906, there is a cave under the castle which translated from Gaelic is called John of Lockerbur's Bed. He is said to have went there in times of danger. The Mackays are the descendants of John of Lockerbur and are reported to still own the banner with his motto written in gold letters in Gaelic, translated to Be Valiant. Castle Varick is believed to be the ancient seat of Clan Mackay who built the tower around the 1300s. The Mackays were a powerful Highland clan who supposedly supported Robert the Bruce during the wars of Scottish independence during the 1300s. Between 1427 and 1433, a Scottish clan battle for succession was fought, the Battle of Drum between the Mackay clan and the Sutherland clan. This fight took place on a hill called Carn Fada, between Ben Loyal and the village of Tongue. On one side was Angus Doe Mackay and his son John Aberach Mackay. On the other side were Angus's cousins Morgan Mackay and Neil Mackay, who were supported by troops from the Sutherland clan led by Angus Murray. It was Neil Mackay and Morgan Mackay who were attempting to take the Mackay lands from their cousin, Chief Angus Du Mackay. Centuries after Bruce and the clan battle, the Mackays were anti-Jacobite. The Mackay parishes consisted of Tongue, Durness, Far and Edricillus. This region was known as Strathneighbour and was northwest to the county of Sutherland. In 1746, a battle took place near Tongue between a Jacobite ship carrying treasure and two English Navy ships. The Jacobite crew were trying to slip ashore with their gold. They were then caught by the Navy, who were supported by local people who were loyal to George II during this time. This was a major setback for Bonnie Prince Charlie before the oncoming Battle of Culloden. The Mackays moved from the castle to Tongue House around the 16th century. There is no evidence of the house's first structure as this was destroyed by fire by Cromwell's army in 1655. The house then belonged to the first Lord Rie of the Mackays. The house we can see today was first built around 1678 and is now owned by the Countess of Sutherland. The chief of the Mackay clan sold his land to the Sutherland Earls in 1829. This resulted in a large part of the clan suffering considerably during the Highland Clearances. After the clearances, many people moved from the Sutherland inlands to the village of Tongue. Ewan Robertson was a Gaelic poet who lived in Tongue during the late 1800s. He wrote the poem which translates to My Curse on the Border Sheep. This was a mockery of the Sutherlands and the clearances of people off of the lands of Strathnaver in favour of agricultural income. 
The walls of Castle Bannock were made from metamorphosed sandstone and were around five feet thick. The square bricks were placed without using mortar and therefore have stayed intact for over 500 years, even taking into account the local weather. The castle looks to have had two floors originally and possibly an attic. The ground floor was entered through the existing doorway on the north wall. This could have been used as stables as there were no interior stairs accessing the upper floor. The upper floor entrance on the south side would have been accessed by an external staircase of sorts, possibly wooden at the time. In 2017, the castle was made accessible by the construction of a steel staircase and inside a spiral stair leads to a viewing platform. The majority of the restorations were paid for by Anders Holch Povelsen, a Danish clothing billionaire. Povelsen gifted £200,000 to restore the ruin with an additional cost of £70,000 of the bill being paid for by Historic Scotland. You can visit Castle Barrack easily by foot from the village. It takes around 40 minutes to walk up the hillside on a gravel path, but it is worth the walk to allow visitors the spectacular views over the coastal area and the mountains. Thanks for watching and I look forward to visiting a castle near you. Bye!